God, there is so much. There is just so freaking much. Anyway, I'm about to review the uh, Gustard R26 DAC slash streamer. And when you see a DAC that's this big, your first thing is, how many gemstones, Zeos? Didn't you say no more $2,000 DACs? Well, you're in luck. $1,629 or $1,650, I think, everywhere. It's on Amazon, it's on Hi-Fi Go, it's on Aoshida, and it's on Shenzhen. So you have your choice of where to get it. A user sent this in. So that means I got to link to all those. And because a user sent it in, I get to break his fucking heart if I don't like it. We'll see. Um, I'll give you the tour before I just spend, oh God, how long setting it up to test all the features. So I guess we'll start with the looks. Silver box. Needs anime waifus, I'm not gonna do it. It's not my unit. But I would have plastered it with fucking like a scene. Like I would get stickers of trees. I should get so many different stickers. I could make like a scene, like like a little draw the ocean and there's a palm tree and then Jojo standing here. It'd be great. Um, the sides are nice because they're this machined, I would call it a heat sink. I don't know how much heat this is going to actually produce. I've had it on. I've used it on the desk a couple weeks ago and then took it off to do other things. But that is a nice, clean look on the sides. The front... You get a button with a light around it. It's obviously not plugged in. You get a very interesting shaped cutout here. So at least it ain't boring. All right. This is definitely some fucking like Woody Allen sci-fi level bullshit here. It says Gustard. We have this a weird curvature here. Then we've got a jog shuttle with a push button in the middle. It says R26. The bottom of the unit has these really nice knurled like knob feet. I wish there was a knob. I wish this was a knurled knob that looked like these feet because there's so many things that are not that good. Some vent holes here. And I guess we should look at the back of the unit because that's where the fucking, ugh, it's going to come in. <sighs> ugh. Um, single set of RCA outputs, single set of, R of XLR outputs. Everything, every hole has a plug except for the a a AES EBU. Um, look, I've literally never seen a plug for an HDMI port, but because this is II2S, it's got a little plug. It's got a USB with a little plug. I mean, where do they go in China to get this? It's got a LAN port, RJ45 with a little plug. They don't have a plug on the USB-C, which I believe is for firmware updates only. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's what that is. Here's your Bluetooth, I think also Wi-Fi antenna, unless it doesn't do Wi-Fi through this. And you have to use LAN, in which case they're fucked, because I'm not unplugging that to get to this. Uh, coaxial digital, uh, ASEBU, which is another form of coaxial digital. Here's your optical. Here's your uh, 10 megahertz in, which is for a world clock. You have um, two switches here, both set to 220. I need to switch that. How did I work this before? This thing must switch both. I'm pretty sure I had this working and on my desk a couple weeks ago, and I did not switch those off of 220. So magic, my house is apparently 220 as well as 110. Here's your power input, and here's your switchy switch switch. Um, I think it would be worse if it was on 110 and you plugged it into 220. That's when shit breaks. But uh, anyway, yeah, they're they're in there. They're deep in there. I have to get a screw thing. And uh, it's pretty heavy on this side. The fucking, that's that's the heavy side. So now let's let's figure out if uh, I can hear a difference. Because actually down there, because this is an R2R. It is an R2R DAC. And I have the, the last R2R DAC that I fell in love with is, is right there. Uh, hi. It's the Denifrips Aries 2 hiding out in the back. And... This is like twice the price. I think that came out with like 800 bucks when you calculate it out or seven something. That's twice the price. So even if it sounds exactly the same as the Denifrip series, this has a volume knob, this has a remote control, this does streaming, it might be worth it. We, we might have a worthwhile DAC, everybody. But we're not gonna we're not gonna know until I do some critical fucking listening. So let's get critically listening. All right, so <clears throat> science. She blinded me with science. Something, something, emotion. Um, so a few things have been added to the desk and a bunch of shit retracted from the desk. Um, I've got this set up, which I haven't de delved into yet, which is the JDS Labs EL2 balanced amplifier, uh, pushing the uh, little Zen Pros, 
the Dunu Zen Pros with the with the name Zeos engraved in them because I wanted them so bad. Um, topping A90D, obviously, because it's the best linear. It's it's the best. It's the best. It's the best. However, I'm sitting here and I'm like, all right, am I going to just assess this? Where's the competition? There. That is an SMSL 10th anniversary Sanskrit deck. Uh, anywhere from $109 to $130 on Amazon. It does this cool thing. We if we turn it, the, the, the display turns, so you can mount it vertical or horizontal. Actually, you could turn it in every direction, I think. Ah, ah, science. So that little thing is being fed. Everything here, my computer, laptop there, USB to a uh, Singzer. SA6 or SU6, I'm sorry, which is a digital to digital converter. So it's USB in, and then it shits out two coaxial digitals, a fiber optic, two I2S. If everything comes out at the same time, beautifully, that's like a $600 unit. So I'm feeding this with II2S or the, the HDMI connector. So that's the best you can pretty much give because it bypasses a bunch of shit and does all the processing internally. Great. That's getting coax, that's getting fiber optic from the same unit. So they're both getting the same signal at the same time. Um, I have this wired up to this uh, XLR. I have this wired up to this RCA. I can switch between the two. This I leaving at full tilt because RCA has less output voltage than XLR. So I'm dropping this seven decibels. Uh, we'll go to the menu real quick. It's just got this one menu. That's it. That's a little tiny menu there. PCM filter, PCM NOS, or non oversampling. Then you got DSD direct. Attenuation is an option that when you turn it on, everything gets real quiet. Then turn it up and it goes louder. Um, you've got a reference clock, internal or external. You've got phase inversion, disabled or enabled. And then brightness has eight levels and then auto. And this is as bright as it gets. And I kind of wish it was brighter. I don't you know. That's way brighter. That's twice as bright as that is. Just saying, even this is like dull. Like I know I've got quite a lot of lighting going on here, but that would still be hard to see in like a normal day. Um, this is actually hooked up to the outputs of this. So I got to switch this to pre-out to run this, to run that. It's fine. I trust this thing to be clean for the preamp. That said, I've been sitting here and I've been using, I've been using the atriums because they're $2,700. They're highly respected and lovable. And I love them. The problem is I can't judge a DAC. If, the sort of differences I'm listening for, this is too good a headphone for that. I know that doesn't sound right. But this is the kind of headphone that everything just sounds great. No matter what, I plug this, take this plug out, plug this into a toilet. If the toilet could power this headphone, it would be the best fucking time you've ever heard that headphone. It's just always great. So I'm going to have to swap this out probably for... Tim socks, maybe. Uh, in the interim, if I double press this, go to the preamp. Now I have these IMs, which are like the, the, the stethoscope of the audio world. And the, the biggest problem here is amplifiers make m way more difference than DACs do. So I'm I'm here trying to tell you if this DAC is worth sixteen hundred dollars. And the only way I could figure to do that is to compare it. I was actually looking for like the shittiest DAC. I have the Prozor DAC up there, but that's like unfair because that's basically like plugging it into actual toilet. And I'm not going to be like, well, it's better than a Prozor DAC because that doesn't prove anything. Um, so I'm trying to go against something that's like the cheapest that I still like have and love and respect. So that's that one. Uh, give me a bit. I'm going to do some IM listening. More 24-bit or other, I think I have a couple songs that are like higher end. But that's another thing. People are always like, well, Zeos, how do you expect to hear a difference unless you're losing the best fucking source? And I'm like, well, I'm just using the source that probably 90% of people have. Or no, I'm using the source that, no, 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 90 is good. 90, because, um, no, you know, not even 90. Everyone's listening to Spotify. They're just streaming some shit on Spotify. It doesn't fucking matter. All right? If you're crazy audiophile levels and you're like, I have everything in DSD one bit. Doesn't fucking matter what you're getting. You're not watching this channel. If you're watching this channel and you have nothing but DSD one bit, leave. I am not your guy, friend. I'm not your body, pal. Um, so going to 24 bit and stuff like this, is, that's it. This is a song, go with the music you know, not the stuff people tell you to listen to, especially for assessing gear. So I'm going to switch to IMs now and see if I can pick up anything because right now, 
between the two, I'm having a real fucking hard time picking out this DAC versus that DAC. And this has got balanced in, this has got RCA in, and I volume matched it, and it's like, mm, not with that. All right, let me finish this up real quick. So I swapped back to the LA90, because the LA90 has a unique feature that it accepts three balanced inputs. So I could have three different DACs feeding it into it, and I trust it for headphones. In fact, with these Tim Socks, we're on high gain to an adapter to this. Um, and then I'm like, well, why am I, I know, I'm comparing it to a cheap DAC and that's fine, but let's go for the Dan Fripps Aries. That's the, that's the reason. You're either spending twice as much on this or this. This doesn't have any features except for I could phase and mute. And I could tell you this much, there is a difference between these two. I have my third inputs, I've also got a, a cheaper Gashelli Labs DAC plugged into it. And there's, that's a volume difference because it's got less voltage coming through the XLR, so I really can't compare. But A and B, or one and two on this, I can actually hear an audible difference. There's a different level of low end, and there's a different level of like width in the sound. And um, I actually forgot which way I plugged it in because I, I had to like, I texted L and R because none of my XLRs are labeled, and I swapped them out, and I was like, which one's which? So for a good period of time, my ignorance was helping out this review. So I'm like, wait, which one? And then when there was one that was louder than the other, I had to put this back into a mode where I could adjust the volume because this is still three decibels louder than the Denifrips Aries by default. So I'm like, all right, just just take it down. And okay, okay. And then I'm just, that's it. Next, wait. And I'm just back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And I think... If we're, we're basing an, a non-R2R DAC on the scenario here, that isn't RCA and running through that, and these are much more, much more resolving headphones than the, uh, the, the ZMF, I think that R2R makes a difference still. I think the Denifrips Aries, however, still has the sort of difference that I'm looking for in an R2R versus what the Gustard can pull off. Because this is the, I just, I, I can't make this review any longer, God almighty. I'm sitting here bouncing through them, and I would take the Aries sound over the Gustard sound by like the smallest fucking increment. By the way, I'm not testing out the AUPNP features of the Gustard because there's no wireless. It's that Wi Fi antenna is not a Wi Fi, it's just a Bluetooth antenna. You have to physically plug in because there's no settings menu to do that. You have to physically plug in the uh, Cat5, which I'd have to build one. And it's just going to show up there and then work. So it's like, fuck it. That's. That's great. I'm glad it has that option. If you need those options, honestly, if you're not sitting here critically listening on two thousand dollars, pick one. They're both going to be. They're both going to serve your art to our purposes. I think you just save half. If you don't need the features of this, get the Aries. If you do need the features of this, get this. At least it looks fucking good. It it's okay if it's not much better than the Aries. Because like I said, you're paying for the other features on it. You're paying to have Bluetooth. You're paying to have a remote control. As gimped as remote control as this is, because it literally is just... Like, I didn't know what that was. Like, it should be labeled. It's not. It's power. That's power. Menu gets into the menu. I read through the menu. There's nothing to play with in there. Up, down, left, right. Play pause for other things, because you can apparently control a DAC, an amp, and a streamer with this one remote. Goose starts even cheaper than SMSL. And it's got the left and right volume rocker to adjust things. That's it. That's it. I, I've, I've come to the conclusion that R2R is indeed a better format for DACs. If you're going to spend upwards of five, six hundred dollars on a DAC, you may as well get the Aries. And if you need streaming features and a remote control, you may as well get the Goose Start. The R26 performs admirably. Only sitting here, fucking obsessively clicking back and forth, that I actually notice that there's like a slight the, the warmth. And the warmth, I think, might have been, the, the, it was the Gustard. It was a little bit more bass. But then you switch to the Denifrips and it like leveled and it got a little bit, just a little bit wider, like things pulled. And I'm like, that's enough. That's enough. Stop, stop the review. Stop, stop testing. Just record this. So there you go. Uh, do I give the Gustard R26 a thumbs up? I do give it a thumbs up. If you have the need for the other things, if you just want a straight up, no fucking frills DAC, Denifrips series still wins. Oh, and I love the LA90. I can't push that fucking enough. And the Tim Socks, no one owns them. Only I own them. Look at how nice they are. Look at the leather and the all oh, the planar. Needs so much power. Anyway, wallpaper in the description in the hoard. Um, Patreon, subscribe star, support this channel. 
If you'd like to see these reviews early, participate in your art sales, listen to Lost of Sound Demos, check out the $5 tier. If you want to talk to me directly in a, in a group chat and send pictures, and I will I preview everything that's going on. They're the behind-the-scenes chat. $10 a month gets you into that on either subscribe to our Patreon. And then if you're in that, you get into a lifetime swap me channel where you can buy, sell, and trade gear. So yeah, no, I think they did a good job. Like I'm waiting for like a Gashelli Labs art tour because that'll be probably four or $500 and it's going to be wild, 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 I say. Anyway, so thank you for everyone coming by. Don't forget to check out Hi-Fi Guides and I'll see you in the next plus $1,000 DAC review where I guess we could lose my mind.